from the dark domain. He lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. In John chapter 20, starting at verse 1, we read as follows. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. 
The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Just a few comments about this before we continue singing. Every one of the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all record this story, and it's all very similar. For one, they all have these women as being the first witnesses to the empty tomb, to the resurrection. That's significant all by itself. In a time when the testimony of a woman didn't matter much. Had they really just wanted to pretend this had happened, they would have had men being the first witnesses. But just going back to verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, in other words, this morning, Sunday morning, before the sun rose, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb in some of the other accounts, they say the women were wondering who's going to roll the stone away. Well, Mary Magdalene saw it was already removed. On Friday, they saw their master, the one they believed to be the Messiah, crucified. and then put into a tomb, and the stone rolled over the entrance. I expect Mary Magdalene hadn't slept much. I don't think it was that Mary Magdalene was an early riser, it's just that she couldn't sleep. This person that she believed to be the Messiah was dead. Some of the accounts have the women were going there to put spices on the body. And again, they see the stone rolled away. So Mary Magdalene sees this stone rolled away, doesn't look inside or anything. She's, my guess, she's a mess right now. It's bad enough to see your master, the one you thought was your savior, crucified brutally executed. Now his grave has been violated. So she turns around and runs to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom we understand to be John. She says, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. You know, can they not even let him rest in death? So these other two disciples run. The younger one runs faster than the older one, but the older one is a little more impulsive. He goes right into the tomb. And they see the cloth that had been around Jesus' head folded up by itself. Then the other one, the younger one, comes into the tomb too. He went inside. He saw and believed. We hear this story year after year. We read the other scriptures about Jesus being raised from the dead. But for them, this was an absolutely unthinkable thing that someone could rise from the dead. Yes, they had already seen Jesus raise a few other people from the dead, but somehow that Jesus would rise himself. Just that last statement, he saw and believed. Not everybody believed at the same time. It took some of them a long time to come to this realization, yes, he actually is alive. But John saw and he believed right away. It's just an amazing thing that we celebrate. We're going to sing some more songs.
we would invite you to continue worshiping with us. There's a, there's a lot of songs, so don't feel compelled to stand the whole time, but we would invite you to continue worshiping with us.
This is where the men's quartet was supposed to come in to give us that little switch. So pretend you're not seeing this. Despised by the world as a wondrous earth. 
attraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary so I'll share
nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the Going to read a little more scripture. I said before that all four of the gospel writers have the story of the resurrection, and they all have it with a few details different, but the main parts are all the same. Just a reference to something that Luke says after the whole morning of the women coming to the tomb finding the stone rolled away. The disciples come looking in, seeing the empty tomb. Some of the women looking in later, and this angel says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And uh, all of that stuff. Luke then says, later in the day, so the same day, in other words, tonight in the evening, two of them were walking to a different village, and... Jesus met them on the road and talked with them. They turned around and hurried back. The Bible makes it so clear to us that Jesus did rise from the dead. The part that I want to read is actually in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, written probably 25 or so years after all of this happened, written by Paul, who at first opposed the believers in Jesus, opposed them to the point of arresting them and having them executed. Later on, Jesus interrupted his trip, and uh, he became a believer through a series of circumstances. And then this Paul spent the rest of his life traveling around. And if you read in the book of Acts, over and over it says, persuading them. You know, this city, that city, wherever. Gentiles and Jews persuading that Jesus was the Christ. So anyway, this same Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve, and after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, although some have fallen asleep. Keep in mind, he was writing about 25 years after the event. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. So Paul says, besides all the others to whom Jesus showed himself that he was resurrected, he also showed himself to Paul in that interruption on his trip to Damascus when this bright light shone around him and when he was then persuaded to believe. It's the resurrection. 
Paul says it all comes down to that. Verse 12 in the same chapter, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Because there were people who did not believe in the resurrection. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. It doesn't matter what kind of religion we practice. If Christ has not been raised, it's all pointless. Verse 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And I like that word, first fruits. They, Jewish people in their background, knew that. They had this Jewish law that when your grapes are ripening in the vineyard, you pick the first ones that are ripe and you bring them to the temple as an offering to God. Trusting that there will be more grapes, that you won't have a hailstorm that night and you never even got to taste your crop. Or when the barley is ripe, the first heads that are ripe, you take them and you offer them to God. Trusting that God will finish the harvest and you will also have something to eat for yourself. First fruits. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Meaning that this is what God has done to show, yes, I can do this. And therefore, we also know that we will rise from the dead. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ, all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits. Then when he comes, those who belong to him. So when he does come back, everybody else who believes in him will also, because of the resurrection, because of today, we know that's coming. We don't have to wonder. the last verse in this chapter. He spent the whole chapter, and it's a long one, it's 58 verses long. He spends the whole chapter talking about the resurrection and why it's important to know that Christ died, because it matters to us. But it doesn't just matter that we know that we'll live forever. It doesn't just matter because we know we will rise from the dead. That's all in our, for us, that's future. The last, very last verse says that actually matters right now too. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. If your Bibles have the headings that the editor put in there, not the, act, the original writers, but the editors, some start that verse as a different section. I don't like that. It belongs right where it is. Because Jesus died from the dead, or because Jesus died, because he rose from the dead, because all of these things. So don't quit what you're doing. Don't quit giving yourselves to the work of the Lord. It's worth it. It matters. All of these other things, the resurrection, that's all future, but it matters in our daily lives. We know we'll live again. We know there is eternal life. Jesus' resurrection proves there is eternal life. So let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We have one more song.
And that's why we're here, because he lives. And that's why we keep on worshiping him. And that's why we go on into the next week and into the next year, seeking to follow his will, because he lives. I'm sure some of you have family gatherings happening today. I wish you all well with that. Some of you are having grandkids and all those things. And it's great. I hope you have a good Easter Sunday and a good week. Let's bow. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this weekend celebrating the crucifixion of your son. The fact that when he did that, he broke the power of sin. And thank you, God, that he rose from the dead, that death has no power over him. And therefore, we know that it will have no power over us. So, Father, as long as we are here, help us to walk in your will. Lead us, guide us, and bless us, we ask, in Jesus' name. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>